Hello, it's the Randy Ducken. Welcome back for another video. And today I have three replays to show you in the recently buffed Tier 10 American Tech Tree Light Tank, the Sheridan. So before we get into the replays then, what have they done? They have increased the max health of the tank from 1,600 to 1,700. So 100 increase, a slight increase there. They've increased the turret rotation speed from 43 to 48. And then on the 105mm gun which I run on the Sheridan, because this tank does have an option between the single shot um, sort of DPM gun with a 390 alpha or the big derp gun. But on the 105mm uh, gun, they have reduced the reload time from 9.2 to 8.9 base reload. Increase the accuracy from 0.38 to 0.36 and then increase the aim time from 1.7 to 1.6. They have also made some changes to the derp gun, which isn't the, the gun I run on this tank, but they've reduced the reload of that from a base reload of 20 to 19.3. They've increased the accuracy from 0.50 to 0.48 and again increase the aim time from 3.3 to 3. So that is it for all the changes. Let's just get on to the replay then and we can see how these changes have affected the tank. Okay, so here we are then for replay number one on Forge. Now if you want to see the equipment and crew setup I'm running in this tank, you can see that at the bottom of the screen now. So here we are for the first replay then. I wouldn't say Forge is the best map for a light tank, but it's not certainly not the worst either. Now we pushed to this sort of uh, position to start just to see if we can spot the cross and get any early information um, and see if we can get any early cross damage. Because the Sheridan, to be honest, has always been one of my favourite light tanks. It's a little bit different, I would say, than some of the other uh, light tanks because you're almost like a fast medium, if you like. You know, I mean, you are still a light tank, but... Your, con your camo compared to the other light tanks is not uh, the best, but you do have fantastic DPM with this 390 alpha gun. You also have um, you know, 10 degrees of gun depression, and you can really pick up a lot of damage in this tank in a quick space of time. And I, yeah, I have always liked the Sheridan. Now it also has this hidden Sheridan factor that the, it has a lot of space armor and some you can all, often get some weird ricochets off the rear of this tank, which you shouldn't really ha happen, um, and that can be quite funny at times. But this particular replay, it's not the best game I've had in the Sheridan by far, but it's one of those games where I wanted to show it because it doesn't all go your way, and it just shows that, I guess, never how bad it looks, you, you want to keep trying to the very end because... You never know that you might be able to pull a what, something which looks like a certain defeat to a unlikely victory. So we tried to get some early damage. We did get some early damage off at the start. We did lose a little bit of hit points and it just wasn't anywhere for me to really fight there. But thankfully I have fantastic mobility, you know, being in a light tank. So I'm just going to try and keep moving around the map to try and find somewhere to get some damage in and help our team really. So I don't want to go and brawl with the heavy tanks. Um, but I just want to try and see if I can get some damage in. So I pop back to this location to see if I can help my two tanks on this hill. Got to be careful because the enemy artillery, the enemy fun police is now paying attention. I don't want to eat a shot there. Now you see that I bounce a shot off the side of the tank. That's what I mean. This tank can get weird ricochets at times. Now the G-Saw's pushed right back around the corner. I can't really push in to kill the G-Saw because... The tanks at the back, which are undetected, will just delete me. And obviously the G-Saw's got a very nasty autoloader. So I just don't see how I'm going to help fight there again. And I just feel like they're going to play very passive and make my life like you know, a bit of a boring engagement. It looks like that G-Saw does get shut down though by our friendly FE-1005, which is nice. But I'm going to go back over here now because some of the enemy team has started to push a little bit further forward. And I want to see if I can find any... Uh, angles for damage there. I was seeing if I could sort of back up high enough to actually shoot this Death Star across the buildings but it looks like the buildings are sort of preventing my line of sight and I don't actually have any shots there so it's not going to be possible. I'm going to see if I can get any shots into this tank destroyer over here in the middle. Unfortunately my fantastic driving skills just drove me directly into a rock. Now at this point in the game, 10 versus 11, um, I guess it's not looking too bad. It's still fairly even although the enemy have 
I guess starting to make ground. I, I kind of always prefer the other spawn, if I'm like. Um, and I've got a funny feeling the enemy team are going to start to push forward. And my best thing to do is just get into position so I can try and farm them. And maybe try and get undetected. Like, I'm trying to just get angles the best I possibly can. There's a real awkward fight over there in the middle. Because the enemy team sort of have the sort of F6-7 position. But they also have like the J4-5 uh, sort of line. And there's nowhere really safe to get shots in. Um, I'm detected here and again we're just getting right pushed back in the corner. You can see this where it's starting to go uh, south really. It's not it's not starting to look good. It's now 6 versus 10. The enemy team pretty much taking all the map control. We are just pinned down in this one location which is never good and I'm just trying to escape and think well I can't stay where I was. Artillery can shoot me. It's not going to go well what's the next best thing I can do and I thought if I go back up this hill I can try and create another angle so when they do push in I can get, try and get shots in and that's simply all I'm doing is trying to react to the situation and just find some way to get some damage in unfortunately this enemy uh, bat uh, comes out of nowhere and that is a little bit awkward but he's now shot at least two shells so I think he's only got one left so he can't possibly kill me in one shot unless he you know, has the hesh loaded but I don't think he does um, but it looks like he is on reload. I really want to hit this shot. I want to get rid of this nuisance of a tank. And we do. And we're starting to... Yeah, it's, 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 we was in a 4 versus 10 at one point. We brought it back to a 4 versus 7. But, you know, still the enemy team definitely have the advantage. But it's a lot of low health tanks here. And I'm trying to focus out the low health tanks the best that I can. And I think pulling back to where I got um, is really sort of ended up helping our team here. Because I'm getting these shots in... Um, sort of undetected and able to sort of help out our damage as they try and push our friendly Sturve because the Sturve can be you know, a really challenging tank to penetrate um, and yeah I'm just trying to cover him the best I possibly can so we now put it back to a 4 versus 5 I'm on 4 kills, 3000 damage, 1200 damage like I say it's definitely not the best game I've had in the show then I've got better games coming up in the, in the, in the replay but it just shows, you know, just don't ever, you know, uh, it's never over until it's over. Going to try and finish this enemy uh, bat and he gets taken out by our friendly stuff. And now we finally have the advantage in a four versus three. There's one enemy light tank, one enemy medium tank and enemy artillery left to deal with. I think the light tank is a tusk from memory. So that is a dangerous tank because it can easily dirt me here. And I pulled back off of the, the hill because I felt like something could come behind us. And it looks like that is that Batcher. He's, ro oh, sorry, Tuss. He's rotated. Um, I'm going to try and, try and help, help out my Sturve here and see if we can get some shots in. If I get one in, he's a one shot to a Sturve. He missed his shot. I'm just going to go for the <laughs> the Ram kill. And finally, we do take him out there. Uh, picking up our fourth kill. Putting us on to just shy of 4,000 damage. 1,200 damage. And now I'm pretty confident we're going to get the win. It's just about how much damage we can get in. I'll try and shoot the uh, stock Sheridan on the move. Unfortunately, I don't hit, uh, I hit that. And now this is where I make the, the classic mistake of auto-loading coming in. I should have just aimed that shot because I hit centre mass there. I could have just aimed it and killed him the first time. But thankfully, I got a, a second time of arson. And we do have an opportunity for the top gun here and potential to kill the enemy artillery. But with our friendly tank destroyer bat, you know, he's a free shot auto loader. There's a chance that I'm probably going to kill him before I even get an opportunity. Um, I'm just going to try and get there as quick as we can. We stop here. We've got some opportunities to shoot him. We get one shot in. Gets put on to a two shot. Can we finish him off? No, he gets shut down by our friendly artillery. And that brings an end to replay number one. But still with two more replays to come. So we finish that off with five kills. 4,500, 1,600 assistance and the first class. But let's move on to replay number two. Okay, so we made it to replay number two. This time we are on Hellborn and it is in an encounter battle. There is only one enemy light tank on the team, which is good. And one enemy artillery. Now, it is in counter, and you can see at the spawn, sort of the 8-4 location, I'm guessing a lot of the enemy tanks will go straight into town, just because that's where they spawn, and normally tanks tend to go to the closest location towards them. So I just push up on this first ridge, just to see if we can spot anything. Sometimes they try and play this ridge in front of us, and I just want to see if I can catch anything out crossing. I don't spot anything, I then get spotted and shot by that enemy light tank. Unfortunately, our one doesn't pen and his one does, so not 
ideal, um, but I've got to be a little bit careful now. So I'm just, just obviously seeing, trying to poke, see if I can spot the ridge in the back, but I also am aware that there's Kedby tanks camping there. I'm going to try and knock down this tree, but I'm just going to want to knock it in a way to give me concealment value from the right. So then if I'm, yeah, it gives me a little bit of bonus concealment there as I'm trying to poke using this rock to, for a little bit of protection. So I know there's enemy light tanks there and I really want to try and get some damage into them. We do get one in and sort of evening up the fight here. Uh, this light tank is the tank I want to kill the, you know, the, the most because there's only one enemy light tank and if he dies uh, or they die, it's going to make our life a lot easier and it gives us a lot more freedom uh, around this map. Now, we do have tanks covering us. So if the light tank comes over, he should get shot at. Um, but it looks like he is just, you know, full on, just full sending it on me. He's going to dump his clip in me. He can't actually kill me in one clip, uh, but he does put me on a one shot, and which is not ideal, but I couldn't really stop it. And at least he's traded out um, his tank for that. So probably wasn't really worth it for the damage he got, but um, it has put me onto one shot. So I'm going to have to be a lot very careful now, which is not ideal at the very start of the game. Uh, but... The key thing is the enemy light tank is dead, so that's going to make our life easier. Now I'm pushing up into the middle, into the cap circle. I have no intention of capping, but I know a lot of the enemy teams are sort of in the town location. And I want to just try and force the enemy team to sort of come out of their hiding and try and fight a little bit. Um, so we can try and get some sort of easier damage or some assistance. We do spot that enemy bar at the top of the hill and we pick up the sort of 1,200 assistance off of that so it's all quite well. Like I say, if I get detected here it's going to be dangerous because I am on a one shot to pretty much, well I think everything, um, yes definitely everything in the game now so I do have to be wary of that. Um, again, like I say, I'm not, I have no attention to capping out. I'm just trying to bring this timer down as low as possible now at this point just to force these tanks out like this Fosh. If this Fosh dumps his clip um, then hopefully we can finish him off. He's going to go for the track shot so I don't want him to take me out. We do pen him and take him out but then I get targeted. We do pick up our second kill and you can see the majority of the enemy team are in the town. I don't really want to be fighting in the town so what I want to do is I want to try and clear the rest of the map before they push out so then I can try and get angles so when they do leave the town I've got to clear a shot but in order to do that I need to kill the tanks in this sort of 8-9 line if you like on these hills where there can't be a lot of tanks. We know there's a bar uh, but the majority of the team are in the town so there really can't be a lot. Uh, we move forward and we are going to put one shot into the bar. We do get detected for it but the bar gets taken out. We see an enemy 50 had shots on us so thankfully we've got this big rock we can hide behind here. Now I need to really wait for our friendly heavy tank to close in the distance. If he starts pushing in, to, you know, starts making this E50 shoot him, I'll poke out and get shots to help him. But being on a one shot, I literally can't leave until our heavy pushes in. But our E100 is doing exactly that. You know, he's got no fear really. You know, the E50 is not going to kill this E100. I can push forward now and try and help him out. I'm going to try and put one shot into the drive wheel um, and see if we can get a, a track in place. We don't track him, but he ends up going through the lower plate. We pick up a pen. And now I'm going to try and push up higher on this ridge to try and finish off this E50. Once that E50 is destroyed, it's then freed up the map. And that's that's what I want in a light tank like this. You know, there's no enemy light tank left. If I get freedom of the map to go where I, where I want, you can see all the enemy team are. I know where pretty much the majority, well, it looks like pretty much all of them, bar maybe a TD and an enemy artillery, uh, we can try and trap these tanks and... Just take the map control, take the angles and make it so they can't focus in one direction. They've got to think about multiple angles and at that point you've pretty much got a good chance of winning the game. So we're going to try and finish off this one shot. We do exactly that, giving us the fourth kill, putting some 2,500 damage, 1,600 assistance. It's a 9 versus 6. It's certainly not 1, but like I say, we started to take a good sort of control of the map. I've got the full freedom here of movement. I'm going to push forward onto this ridge in front of us and see if we can get any shots into these TDs and heavy in the low ground there. Um, there's an enemy FE 1005. We're going to see if we can get a shot into this tank. Just got to try and reposition to shoot around this rock here. 
We get a shot in and we don't actually get spotted, which is really nice because that's going to allow us to get another shot into this tank. He is a one shot. I'm looking for the finish. We do, oh, no, we don't get the finish. And then we backtrack gets there first. Uh, now, I really need heat to pen this E100, so I'm probably not going to pen him here. I'll just go for the drive wheel, seeing if I can pen through the drive wheel. Um, and unfortunately, I, I don't get the kill and I pick up a like, tiny bit of track assistance there. Only four tanks remaining. Three of them you can see already detected. The one remaining is the artillery and you just saw that artillery shell shoot and he is in the town. So we know exactly where the artillery is. Obviously I have to be careful with the shotgun but I'm going to move forward to try and take out this artillery. But stop to see if we can pick up a kill on the way. Which we do. Now that gives us the fifth kill. If we kill that enemy artillery we could get the top gun. Um, but I'm just hoping really to catch him unaware. Because if I come around the corner and he's you know, facing us then we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, but you know he's probably got quite a bit of hit points now thankfully he's facing the other way so we get a shot in we can be able to get another shot in before he turns around um, and we're gonna go yeah we do get a shot in now we're hoping we can get one more in through the drive wheel to stop him turning fully so we can get a shot into us we do do that um, it slowed him down slightly but he did have a repair kit um, but thankfully we were able to get that shot in just in the nick of time Picking up the six kill, which gives us a top gun, which gives us 4,200 damage, 2,500 assistance, and that does actually give us the ace tanker there, um, mainly because of the extra bonus for the medal for killing the artillery and the top gun. But we have one more video to come, and obviously we saved the best to last, so let's move on to the final replay of this video. Okay, so here we are for the final replay on Nelberg. Again, there is only one enemy light tank in the game, which is very nice. Uh, there's no artillery in the game as well, which we don't really care about the artillery in the game when we're in the light tank, to be honest with you, because um, we've got more chance of picking up a bit of assistance from a friendly light tank. But I've decided quite early on that I'm going to hope I'm going to take an aggressive position and try and push and win the KA area, because if I do win that it really does put pressure on the enemy team so I can keep a lot of tanks um, spotted um, and the only really danger is that they push it as well but I'm going on the gamble but I only have one enemy light tank so I'm hoping it's going to be okay so we had a good spawn for it as well so we've got a good opportunity of making it we just really don't want to get spotted on the cross that's the real key here is can we make it without getting detected or at least not getting detected too soon but it looks like that is going to happen and we should have freedom to win the position and it looks like it's going to be fairly uncontested as well we are going to stop to put a shot in this italian tank destroyer we do get spotted for it but we're in a good position to get into cover no harm done picking up a first penetration of damage and then we manage to squeeze one into that british medium there so a really nice start to the game we've taken a key area of the map and we've also managed to get a bit of damage in as well so I'm just seeing if we can get any shots in. I'm looking to see if we can get a shot into this bat. I have the tiniest of shots, but I don't even know if it was a, a hitbox, so we don't get any damage there. Um, and I'm just trying to knock a couple of these trees down. Again, just to give me a little boost of concealment there. Um, it gives it a little bit less likely to get detected. We do put one shot into that bat. Now, it looks like that bat's going to sort of hard aim us there, but he has terrible shell velocity, so it does make it easy for me to dodge his shells at range. Um, so I'm going to see if I can just try and trade this tank out but he's aware that I'm looking, he's aware I'm going to look for some shots in and he's now playing a little bit more cagey but I want to try and push it forward and take the advantage so I'm going to get underneath this ridge which is going to make it so those tanks really can't play there without getting sort of permanently de detected and that bat is running because of it we spot an enemy waffle e 100 we are going to try and get a shot in and hope we don't get detected because then we can free farm him we don't get spotted unfortunately he does um lose his detection though but we pick up some nice bit of assistance we spot an enemy rogo dawn there we're going to try and focus this bat out though because it's obviously it's a nasty it's, a, it's essentially a light tank if you like so we do want to focus those tanks out waffle gets spotted we get another shot in puts him on two a two shot there and now we're going to see if we can get a shot into this rogo dawn i think i've gone for the wrong tried to shoot through the gun there i shouldn't have shot the side of the turret uh, and i would have got a free bit of damage but we are picking up assistance of him we're going to try and pick up the kill uh i think we do pick up the kill there and yeah now, what I want to do now, I know there's going to be tanks camping on their base, on their base hill. I can't really push where I want to because of the location of that British medium on the left. 
I really want that tank to move. So I'm going to try and move these rocks on the right, see if we get any angles to shoot him. Mainly just want him to run. I just want him to run to the back of his base because where he is there is kind of a nuisance for me. Because um, it stopped. I, want, I really want to take his location because that will allow me to light their hill, which is what I'm trying to accomplish here. So we're going to see if we can go back and get a shot into his tank, see if he's staying in the same angle. But it looks like he's actually running, which, is, to be honest, is exactly what I want to happen. Uh, we might be able to catch him in the open and get a couple of shots in. But also, I just want him to leave the location he was in because I can't push. I couldn't push there when he was still there, um, which is just going to stop me sort of extending my vision. Uh, so I'm just going to try and poke forward, see if we can get any shots in. You see, he's running, he's trying to get to his hill. This is good news for us. We hope he should get a shot in as he leaves here. We do squeeze a shot in. We do get spotted for it. So we pull around this rock just to give us a bit of protection, block line of sight so the team can't shoot us, um, and just hopefully lose our spot. But I want to try and squeeze in another shot before he escapes. We do hit him. Unfortunately, we do not pen him there. In uh, 11 versus 10, so it is still a close game, but I'm going to try and extend the vision for my team here uh, and try and spot these tanks. We spot an E50 up on the hill here. Um, I might actually be able to shoot him and not get detected. We do do that, and we squeeze an extra pen, and we start to pick up the assistance onto 3,300 assistance now, and 3,200 damage, so we are having a, uh, a decent game with a lot more potential damage available to us. Uh, E50 gets shut down by the back, giving us a bit more assistance there. Uh, this enemy British medium, I'm going to try and push up to try and keep these tanks spotted. Looking and see if we can get any rear shots onto these tank destroyers, uh, which are on the hill on the right hand side. Now, I want to see if I can entice this medium to chase us, if you want, because I want him to push out of his location. I thought about trying to fight him there because I have the hit point advantage, but it's not going to be an ideal fight for me. He's in a, a British medium with 10 degrees of gun depression and a little bit of turret armour. It's going to be awkward, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to have to accept that I'm wasting too much time trying to deal with him because I want to try and get the maximum out of this game as I possibly can because then I've had a good start. So I'm going to try and go around this rock where the British medium can't shoot me anymore and see if we can get rear shots onto these tanks. We should have to finish on the one shot bat uh, tank destroyer, which we do. Picking up another kill, and then we spot an enemy grill. He's not looking at us. We try and get one shot in. Then just get into this rock to keep us a little bit of cover. You see, I'm trying to use this rock to my left, and then, and then you know, trying to stay safe from both the Valor and the grill there. Um, but while also picking up the assistance to keep them spotted, grill gets put onto a two shot to us. We put one shot in. He should now be, uh, well, close to a one shot, I should say. But then the grill gets shut down by our friendly bat, bringing us to a 10 versus 6 with 4,200 damage, 4,300 assistance. And that enemy medium has now moved and can get shots into us. We do put a shot into him though. Uh, now where that medium is means I can't stay safe where I am from both the Valor and the medium, uh, which is a little bit awkward. And that medium is able to sort of free poker. So I'm going to have to move back again so that enemy medium can't actually shoot us. This big wall came out of nowhere and I drove into it. Um, so I just try to avoid that. But only three tanks left. The is still healthy though. I really want that medium to the left to get shot. So I just want to get the most out of this game. But he's moving again. I'm hoping just to try and find out a way to shoot him. He damages our ammo rack but we get the kill. And we still have a repair kit. Valor now puts a shot into us on the right and... Means we are still a two shot to him in theory, but you know, you don't want to run the risk of him high rolling. But he's now completely surrounded, so I'm just trying to squeeze in all the damage I can um, and to try and top up this game the best we can. We're going to try and get a second shot into his turret, which we do put him onto one shot, puts us onto just shy of 6,000 damage now with 4,300 assistance. So we've got a 10 gay combined game, three kills, and one enemy heavy tank remaining. So a little bit more different. I guess the game, this one where we do actually do a bit of spotting and uh, support for a team, but the map was a lot more suitable to that for the light tank, especially when there's only, you know, when you've got big maps like this and there's only one light tank in the game, it gives you so much freedom uh, to try and move around. But this enemy heavy tank was full health, and I'm hoping to get there to get some damage in, but it's quite far away and it's getting closed in by a lot of tanks. I really would like to just get one more shot in if I can just to really finish off this game strongly uh, it looks like I might get the opportunity to come around this corner 
Unfortunately, um, gets shut down the waffle before we do manage to get that shot in. But we have a good game, and let's see how we finish that off. We managed to get 6,000 damage, 3 kills, 4,000 assistance, picking up the ace tanker. And that's it for the video, so thank you so much for your support. Um, if you do like the um, replay, please remember to like and subscribe, because it really helps out the channel. And as always, happy tanking. Oh, get